any true lover of the motor car, to find yourself in St. Agata at the home of Automobili Lamborghini is an experience that you're just never going to forget. And it's an experience that I'm really excited to share with you over the next two weeks. So let me tell you what they've arranged for us. We are going to be going on what is possibly the ultimate road trip, driving through Italy, France, ending up at the English Channel, where we're going to be crossing over to the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Yes, you've heard me right. I actually can't believe I'm getting to do this. And these are the cars that we're going to be doing it in. I last drove a Huracan in 2015 in South Africa when it launched, but this is a Performante, and I'm going to be getting to drive through. I actually can't believe it. Sit back, it's going to be a good ride. I think I was born Italian because you know what I love about these people? Not only do they make the most incredible cars, but food and enjoying food and taking time to celebrate life is such a critical part of it. Yeah, we've got these amazing cars. We're meant to be going on a road trip, but what are we doing? First, we're feeding ourselves and our souls. So day one and we've covered just on 500 kilometers, but admittedly, most of it has been on highways and driving in the Performante on the motorway is kind of like asking Usain Bolt to run the 100 in 12 seconds. And then we found this piece of road. Can I tell you, it's on a road like this that you really are thankful that you are in the Hurricane Performante. These are tight switchbacks. It's just incredible how true the front end turn is. It's just, it's mind blowing. I just want to be able to uh, hear this thing open up, that 5.2 litre, just to make some noise after we've been sitting and cruising for so long on, uh, on the motorway. I know they talk about the hills being alive with the sound of music. I'd tell you the people are all coming out to have a listen to this. It must sound so amazing, echoing, reverberating through these mountains. This is a very, very special road as well because we're actually going to cross over here from Italy into France. What a way to wrap up day one. Feeling str strangely emotional. Uh, it's been a, it's been an incredible day. You know, just before we found this piece of road, we crossed through the Mont Blanc Tunnel. Uh, it, it was like we were making an opera with the sound of the Lamborghinis. Just unbelievable. And then you get to a road like this. It is so dramatically beautiful in such a dramatic car as well. It leaves you feeling on top of the world. What a way to end day one. It's hard not to feel reflective when you wake up to a view like this. Day one was unbelievable. We've now got 700 kilometers to cover day two. But the big thing is we've left Italy behind. So that means no more of that fantastic food and just a lot of French attitude. You know you're getting old when the voice of reason screams louder than that of reckless abandon. When Lamborghini said to me, 1,500 odd kilometer road trip through Europe, and you're gonna be driving in the Huracan Performante, I was like, yeah, flipping amazing, unbelievable. And then 600 kilometers in, and you start thinking, that Urus would be really comfortable around about now, adaptive cruise control, massaging seats, heaven. But let's just be a little bit fair and, and give credit to just how far supercars have come in the evolution. I think if you consider doing this trip uh, many years back in a Kuntash, uh, it would be like the equivalent of climbing Everest. It would be that much of a mission. But let me tell you something. I never thought that I would ever be complaining about the sound of a 5.2 litre V10. It's glorious, right? Yeah. 
it's glorious until you are cruising along at 130 kilometers an hour for 600 kilometers. You hear that? It's like someone's drilling in your head. But amazing. Put it into Strata. Listen to the difference. It's incredible. What an unbelievable experience to be in the home of Champagne and Epernay, standing on Champagne Avenue uh, outside the home of Pierre de Jouet. It was so incredible to walk through those cellars. I mean, we're talking going back 1811, looking at bottles from 1825, the two oldest bottles of Champagne left in the world. It really is easy to draw parallels between the craftsmanship that goes into creating a vintage Champagne and a supercar like Lamborghini. You can't hurry it. It's works of art, it's attention to detail, it's a real passion and love for what you do. What an unbelievable experience. Champagne, of course, has always been associated with motorsport success. And just outside Epinay is this incredible piece of motoring nostalgia, the REM circuit. They had their first race here in 1926 and actually hosted a couple of Formula One races too in the late 40s and early 50s. And you know who holds the record? Fangio. Now, because we are in a track-focused hurricane performante, it seems like a good place to put it to the test. So why I thought this uh, REM circuit would be a good test of the straight line capabilities of the Huracan Performante is because the old circuit, the original road circuit, was known for its incredibly high speed. Now this is probably really directly competing against the 600 LT from McLaren which we drove earlier this year because it's also track focus, also launch under 2.9 seconds, but the delivery is obviously so different because there you're sitting with a twin turbo um, in a smaller engine, which the obvious soundtrack, yes, wow, this sounds incredible, but it's also how the power is delivered. It is happy to rev, it comes alive, and it makes it a lot easier to set up the car off the throttle, keeping it in that gear, but this acceleration is incredible. Fangio and the guys racing there must have had balls of steel, but the cool thing is it's not a perfect surface, it's not a racetrack, it was a racetrack on a road, and that I think is what is critical. You know, these cars, even though they are track focused and have unbelievable abilities on the racetrack, this is where they're going to live, on public roads, so that for me was just a, a beautiful synergy and a nice way to leave this region, get back onto the motorway and tackle the 650 kilometers that are going to take us to Calais, cross the channel into the UK, uh, to Portsmouth, fantastic. It's been a dramatic 1,200 kilometers from St. Agatha to get here to Calais. We've had mountain passes, highways, the finest champagne and plenty of nostalgia. But our ultimate road test of the Huracan Performante is not done yet because next week, we're over there carving up the English countryside as we march on to the Goodwood Festival of Speed. Mm -hmm.